A Python dictionary is an object derived from the dictionary class. In this video, we're going to have a look at a Python dictionary object. In the previous video in this playlist, we looked at this computer program and we can see here the runtime of the program. What happened on this line is a dictionary is created and this line printed the dictionary and the length of the dictionary as we can see here. This is the dictionary and this is the length. On this line, we then deleted the entry from the dictionary whose key was UK. This line then printed the actual dictionary again, as you can see here, and you can see that the UK London key value pair has been removed. And of course, the length of the dictionary is now two. This particular line here, you can see is a message. This is the object, and this is the method to be invoked. And we can see that it's a message because of this dot notation being used and of course this particular line then printed the dictionary and the length of the dictionary which you can see here and of course we have an empty dictionary with no items within it consequently the length is zero now this particular line in the program is responsible for creating an instance of the dictionary class this is the name that is then bound to the object of the dictionary class and that particular object will contain these items here. If we go on and look at the following one line computer program which you can see here you can see that I'm going to be printing and what I'm going to be printing is the directory of the class DICT the dictionary class. Now what this is going to do it's going to display the attributes of the dictionary class. Now just as an aside, remember Python refers to what's in classes as attributes. Other languages talk about data attributes and methods. Another word for data attributes are data fields and obviously the methods still maintain the name methods. Another way to think of it is when we talk about attributes in Python, maybe refer to them as data attributes and method attributes. Putting all that to one side, however, let's have a look at the runtime of this particular program and we can see it is here. And if you look, you can see that we have a number of methods. Here's one of the methods that we've looked at earlier in the playlist, the double underscore in it, double underscore special method, often referred to as dunder in it, where the dunder refers to the fact that we have two underscores. And if you look, we have a number of Dunder attributes, but the ones I'm particularly interested in are these here. So I'm going to extract those and display them separately, as you can see. These are not special methods. They're not the ones that have the double underscores at the beginning and the end of their names. They're just straightforward methods. Now, these particular attributes belong to the dictionary class, as indeed all of these do. But the key here is, as a computer programmer, most of the time I'm only interested in these particular attributes here. I'm not interested in the ones that have the double underscores at the beginning and the end of their name. What I'm interested in is these, because these will give me an idea as to what I can do with the instances of the dictionary class. It can be very useful to look at these particular attributes from the perspective of a UML class diagram, which I'm actually going to show here. And if you have a look at this class diagram, you can see I've given it the name DICT, which is the abbreviation for dictionary, but in Python, it's actually this name here. It's not dictionary, it's this abbreviation. And if you look down here, you can see that I've got a number of method attributes and all of these you can see have been taken from this list here that I managed to find out about from printing the directory of the particular class that I'm dealing with here the dict class when I look at object oriented programs I like to refer to something called the execution space and within this execution space we have objects and these objects send each other messages now for the program 
we've been considering in this video we will have seen this particular statement here where capitals is assigned and here you can see we have three key value pairs now this particular line will result in an object based on the dict class being produced that's the dictionary class if we have a look at the dictionary we can see that here and you've seen that I produced this a moment ago in the previous slide and what's going to happen is from this particular dictionary class we're going to have the following object created and we can see that the object has the name capitals ie capital is bound to this particular object because that's the word as it appeared here in the program statement now this object is going to be based on this class so we can look at the object and say well what's it going to have well it's going to have to start with this particular method here clear which I'm showing appearing within the object and of course it's also going to have copy and if we look down the list here we can see we have from keys get items keys pop in other words we can go all the way around to the pop method and then of course we can see we have the remaining methods here which I'm going to represent by that dotted line and then the etc meaning that around in this area I like to show the method attributes and in fact this particular object will have all of the methods as they were defined in the class because this object is based on this particular class and of course to be consistent with the diagrams I've shown in the past I would put the actual data attributes the data fields in the position here within the green position so in fact if we look up here we can see we have the three key value pairs and they will be shown here as you can see now of course I don't have room for all of the three pairs so I've just shown the first pair here now if I now have a look at the following program statement which is capitals full stop clear this is the name of the object this is the method to be invoked and I know this is a message because we have the dot notation consequently what's going to happen is we're going to have a message sent to this particular object and the message we can see is clear and what that's going to do it's going to invoke this method here within the object as it was defined within the class so this object has this method because this method was declared here in the class and of course we've seen what the clear does already it'll clear the current objects data fields and remove all of the key value pairs so you can see I show them being removed from the diagram let's now consider another example of a message being sent to an instance of the dictionary class well, we're going to start off again by looking at the execution space and we're going to have a look at the same program statement that will create an instance of the dictionary class here's the dictionary class here there's the instance and of course the instance will be populated by all of the methods and we can see that in the center we have the key value pairs appearing what I'm particularly interested in now however is sending a message that will invoke a different method within this particular object and the message I wish to send is this one here and you can see the message is going to be sent to this object and the method to be invoked is the pop method and the pop method takes in with it the key value UK so this will result in the following message being sent to the object this message will cause this here to be invoked this will execute and what this will do it's going to go to the dictionary and it's going to remove this from the dictionary in other words it locates the key and then looks at the full key value pair and removes it it pops it off the actual dictionary or pops it out of the dictionary so it's a little bit like the delete we looked at earlier in the playlist where del would remove an item from a dictionary but this is an object orientated programming way of doing the same thing 
This is the computer program that used on this line the keyword DEL to remove a key value pair from the dictionary. This is the dictionary. This line printed this out, which is the dictionary and the length of the dictionary. This line then removed the key value pair whose key was UK. So this will be removed. And of course, this line now prints the new state of the object capitals and also the length of capitals. And we can see that on this line. There's the key value pairs and we can see it has a length of two. Let's now turn our attention to this computer program here. And it's almost the same as the one above. The difference being on this line, you can see I've used a message. Whereas on this line, I used a keyword. Now the output from this program is shown here. And you can see it is identical to this output here. Consequently, the effect of this message is the same as this keyword here. They both got rid of an item from the dictionary. Let's use this computer program to take a closer look at the pop method and how it fully functions. Here you can see that I'm creating a dictionary called capitals and it has three items, three key value pairs and on this line I'm going to be printing the dictionary and the length of the dictionary. So if we have a look at the output we get we can see the program here so this line is responsible for this output and we can actually see that it has printed the dictionary and the length of the dictionary. Now on this line, what you can see, I have the message here and this message is going to this object and it's going to invoke this method that takes with it this key value. Now of course this key value is going to identify this key value pair here. What will happen now, however, it will pop this key value pair off the dictionary. But if you have a look here, we have an assignment statement. And that assignment statement will assign to this variable the value London. So in other words, what this does, it goes and gets the value that's associated with the key UK and returns that to here and then removes the key value pair from the dictionary. So this particular line here, what this is going to do, it's going to print the current state of the dictionary, it's going to print the length of the dictionary, and it's going to print the returned capital. And if we look at this line, there you can see we have the dictionary, which now has had one of its key value pairs removed. The length is two, which is correct, because there's only two items in the dictionary, and there's London which is the value that was returned. So to summarize, this pop will get at the value associated with this key, which in this case is London. It'll assign London to here, and the key value pair, which is this key value pair, is then removed from the dictionary. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?